Could there be a serial killer loose in the Pacific Northwest? Authorities claim that there's no evidence to support the connection between two unsolved murders in Oregon and the quadruple murder that happened in Idaho on the 13th. But I beg to differ, and we're going to talk about it. I'm your host, Hyde. This is Hide and Seek Media. Hello, all you beautiful and amazing people. Thank you for tuning in and welcome to the show. If you're new to the channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you get notified anytime I drop a new video. The show is brought to you by the Hide and Seek Media Store. If you're like me and you like to spark a conversation or just make a statement without having to say too much, click the merch link down below and check out all the cool merch I have to offer. And if you use code 1776 at checkout, I'll give you 20% off your entire order. So, if you haven't heard by now, there was a quadruple murder in Idaho where four college students were killed in their beds. And a lot of internet sleuths, including myself, have linked them to two other unsolved murders with the same type of attack, the same type of murder weapon used, um, the same MO, so to speak. Are investigators looking at any possible connection to an unsolved double stabbing in the Salem, Oregon area about a year and a half ago? Specifically, two people stabbed in their home in the middle of the night, long knife, no suspect at this point. One died, one survived. I, th I think we're looking at every avenue, and um, we have other agencies reaching out to us with um, other cases and stuff that we are doing follow-up on, and we will continue to follow up on those. Are you aware of that case? I actually had a uh, tip come in on that case, and I forwarded it to our tip line. Okay. And while authorities claim that there's no evidence to link these cases together, I have found some evidence. Well, not hard, concrete evidence, but I can link these cases together and give you a ge general scenario and theory on what happened. Now, I could be completely 100% wrong, and way off base, but I could also be 100% right. Nobody really knows because there's not a lot of evidence and information being given out about any of these cases. University of Idaho students were found stabbed to death in a home near campus and police have not identified who killed them. Three of the victims lived at the house where the attack occurred. The fourth was there visiting his girlfriend. Police believe they were targeted. I think authorities are still trying to figure out exactly what they're dealing with. You know, initially they came out and said, this appears to be a targeted attack. There's no concern to the rest of the public. But then since then they've retracted that. And I believe as they investigate this case, they're starting to realize it's maybe more complicated than what they first thought. So it's very, very hard to determine, one, if the same style of knife or the same, you know, exact knife was used in all three murders, or if, you know, they were different kinds of knives, if one was longer than the other or bigger or wider, we don't know that, right? We don't know the, the details of each of the, the victims. Only the police know that. Only the investigators know that. And so having that information, maybe they have, that's why they've been able to rule out any connection because there's those stab wounds may not be the same or, you know, there may be differences that we don't know about. But from everything that we've been given in from the media and from the authorities, there are some eerie coincidences that makes me believe that this could very well be a serial killer who is progressing as he's going along. They apparently have looked into the details of the case and all that and said that there's not enough evidence to support a connection. And I, and, and I agree there's not enough rock hard substantial evidence to say without a doubt these cases are all connected. I will give them that. But if they're ruling it out completely then I have a problem with it because I can link these cases together in more than just one way in more than just two ways okay so that to me is more than just a coincidence at that point i found a couple of articles we're going to talk about why the investigators claim 
there is no evidence. And then I'm going to go through what I feel is evidence and does warrant looking into these cases a little bit deeper. Right. So first I found this story here from um, Fox News and it says Idaho investigators rule out connection between college murders and other unsolved stabbings. The University of Idaho student stabbings are not believed to be related to two other cases involving victims sleeping in their beds. Okay, so that's one aspect of it. it. Says all of the victims were sleeping in their beds. Now, I'm going to start this by saying in the Idaho quadruple murder, I believe that Zana and Ethan were the targets and that Kaylee and Madison were just unfortunate you know mistakes i think the killer didn't know which bedroom his targets were in i believe that the killer met zana at the restaurant she worked at and through their conversation something triggered him and she became his next victim and over the next couple of days or weeks he, depending on when it was, like how far away from the 13th he met, you know, he met her, he, he watched and waited. The only problem was the upstairs bedrooms in that house had nice big windows, but curtains on them. So you couldn't see who actually stayed in those rooms. And so it was very hard if you didn't actually get in the house to know who slept where. Right. And so. But in that house, the back door, the screen door, was the easiest access point, and that's why there was probably no signs of forced entry, and that's why the two roommates downstairs were probably left alone, because he went upstairs first, thinking that's where his vic his target was, was wrong on both occasions in both rooms up there, and then came back downstairs to the second floor where he found his targets, took them out, and then left. So having said that, and prefaced all of this by saying that I believe that Zana <clears throat> was the target. Zana and Ethan were the target in the Idaho murders, and the other two were collateral damage. I believe Sandra Ladd was victim number one. And I believe there was something personal between this person and Sandra. And that's what triggered it. And then when he met Jamie Lynn, you know, in the other case, in the second case, when he met the second victim, his second victim, there was a connection between her and Sandra. Well, while I can't find where Jamie Lynn was a, um, a waitress, right? Because that's the connection between Sandra and Z uh, Zana, right? Is that they were both waitresses in and restaurants and so that was an easy way for uh, a serial killer to find a target right waitresses are waitresses and nurses are two of the most targeted professions when it comes to those statistics unfortunately and so <clears throat> that's probably and I, like i said i don't know how he came across jamie lynn but i think what triggered him when he met her was the connection they had with Sandra Ladd. So I have this story here from People Magazine um, that came out not long after the attack actually happened. See, the attack happened on August 13th um, of 2021. It happened at 3 o'clock in the morning. Um, Travis and Jamie Lynn were sleeping. They were getting ready to go on vacation. And they had somebody over at their house getting ready to you know, watch their pets for them and stuff. And when the attack happened, the, um, Jamie Lynn survived, e even though being stabbed 19 times, because her husband got, you know, took on the killer and ended up protecting his wife. And then the friend that was staying at the house, according to reports, scared the killer off. Okay, so, but... What I want to point out in this case that's different from the Sandra Ladd case is that there was two people and there was another person in the home. So the escalation 
from a single elderly woman in her bed to a couple in their bed with somebody else in the home was significant. That's a significant escalation from murder to murder. Um, But then we see it again in the quadruple murder, right? Where there's four victims and there were six people in that home to begin with. So the killer knew he was going to leave people alive. He just didn't think he was going to leave only two. I think initially he assumed he was going to leave four people alive in that home to discover only two dead bodies, but it didn't turn out that way. But back to this case, right? Um, in this article, they mentioned that they that this couple was getting ready to fly to Hawaii on vacation. Now, anybody who's been to Hawaii or is going or now anybody who has never been to Hawaii, when you first go, right, and you're all set to go, you are so excited, right? It's like, oh my God, I'm getting to see paradise, right? I'm going to Hawaii and I'm going to be on a beautiful island where it's sunny and, you know, beautiful all year round and it's just going to be great and fantastic. So you're riding that high and you want to tell everybody you know and everybody you meet that I'm going to Hawaii. I'm going to Hawaii. You know, you know why I know that is because every single time I tell people that I lived in Hawaii for six years, they're like, oh, my God, how was that? That must have been great. Blah, blah, blah. Right. So the people who have never been there, they they put that place up in one of those spheres or that those pedestals right like it's one of those magical places like disney world right if you've never been disney world has got to be one of the most magical places on earth but if you have been it's great but you know there are you you see all the downsides to it after that so the connection with this is that in another article i found here um it says here that sandra ladd Let me see if I can get down to it here. It was down here in this section. Okay, yeah. According to her obituary, Sandra Ladd was... uh, Oh, well, sorry. Down here. Sandra Ladd loved to travel, especially to Hawaii. Now, is that some kind of coincidence? It's possible. It's possible that there's a coincidence between Sandra Ladd loving to go to Hawaii and... Travis and Jamie Lynn Juton going to Hawaii and them being attacked in the same manner. Now, that's that could be completely coincidental. It, I mean, it could be 100%. Or, the person who's responsible for all this had a personal relationship of some kind with Sandra Ladd. And Hawaii was involved. And that triggered him. When he heard Jamie Lynn talking about Hawaii and how they were going to get to go, it triggered him. And he was like, I'm going to have to do something about this. And so he watched and he was like, I'm going to, I'm just going to take them both out. I don't care. Right. And went in, not knowing the friend was there, right. Not doing his research, not doing his due diligence, just going crazy and attacking, but he got away with it. And so that set the marker, right. Because it was 14 months later, Almost to the day that set the marker. Okay, so if I get triggered within this time period, I have to kill somebody, right? That's possible. I'm not a criminal psychologist. I don't know, you know, all of these things. I just, this is what I think that based off the people I've met and the sociopathic tendencies I've seen people have, I tend to lead towards the more cynical side of people's possibilities, right? So for me, the connections are all there. You have Sandra Ladd, 71. So she was victim number one. If we put this in the premise of a serial killer, okay? So I'm that's how I am framing all of this. That's not what you want to hear. Click off. That's fine. I don't care. But that's how this is all being premised. So 
if we look at it from that perspective, that this is not random in a sense that these are all connected by the same killer, then we look at victim number one, elderly, weak, attacked in her sleep. That would give the killer, and he got away with it and has gotten away with it for over two years now. So to me, that says that's just building his confidence enough to attack a couple in their bed almost 14 months later. And when he got away with that and no evidence linking him to the murder, even though he was sloppy in his approach, he realized how just how easy it was to get away with murder. And so he decided to move on and realized that if it happens again, it happens again. I don't care now because I've gotten away with it twice. Well, now a third time. Because I'm willing to bet. I don't know this for a certain. This is my speculation. It's my hunch, my gut, right? But I'm willing to bet that if there's security camera footage from February of 2020 to June 15th of 2020 at Burgerville, I bet if you comb through it, you'll probably find one customer who's been to that Burgerville and to the Mad Greek restaurant in Ida in Moscow, Idaho. Now, given that they're only about 600 miles apart, the chances are likely you're going to see that, right? But I would consider those people persons of interest, especially if they interacted with both victims. But that's my theory. I believe it's a serial. I believe that we are going to see a further escalation, whether it be in the cooling off period or in the amount of victims we see next. But I don't think this is over. I don't think the police think this is over. I don't think they believe this was an isolated incident. And given what I see, just in given what I see, just in, in what's been reported and what we can scour through the internet and find. It seems to me like these, there's more linking these cases than it's not right. Like I said, I don't have all of the details. So the size of the weapon could be different, but a smart killer could be doing that just to throw off the forensics, right? If I use a fixed blade every time, but I change the size of the blade. I change the shape of the blade every time. Then it keeps the investigators guessing, right? But there's correlations between each murder. I can link multiple things to each people. I see multiple points of conversion here. So... Maybe I'm seeing things that aren't there, but that's what I'm seeing from everything I can get from the media and everything that I've watched online, different, you know, podcasts and, and commentators talking about these cases and, and, you know, how they're not linked and, you know, this, that, whatever. I see correlation. So if I'm wrong, let me know in the comments. But I'm going to leave it there. If you made it all the way to the end of the video, I really do appreciate you guys watching. It means a lot that you've made it this far. If you haven't already, make sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you get notified anytime I drop a new video. Smash that like button. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think about the video, the channel, and the topic. I love to engage with my viewers, so feel free to fire away. But if you want to help the channel, the best thing you guys can do is hit that share button 
and share this video on all social media platforms. Those interactions will show YouTube's algorithm that my video needs more impressions, and that's how we're going to grow. I appreciate everything you guys are doing, and I'll catch you later. Peace.